Hello, and welcome to the annual donor recognition ceremony. I am Julie Bergen, President and CEO of Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to this special time as numerous donor families and friends gather to remember the loved ones who gave the ultimate gift, the gift of life. As 2020 ushered in the pandemic, it also created great concern and uncertainty for most of us. Some of you may not have been able to be with your loved ones in their final moments. Many of you may not have been able to gather for a traditional funeral with those you love. This isolation proved to make grief even more complicated. Yet technology provided the ability for doctors and nurses to meet with a patient's family virtually for updates to the plan of care. It allowed families to virtually speak with and see their loved ones who were alone in the hospital. This same technology also allowed for last year's donor recognition ceremony to be held virtually. To our surprise, more families were able to attend than ever before. Over 10,000 donor families, friends, and others throughout the Donate Life community gathered virtually from across the nation and abroad to honor our donor heroes. While we were hopeful that 2021 would allow us to host this important event in person, it was not able to happen. For donation and transplantation to occur, the health and safety of your families and our staff are of utmost importance. We were disappointed to not be able to see you in person, to give hugs and share stories about your loved ones. But we hope that today's ceremony will bring honor to your donor hero and comfort to your family. Because of the generosity of your loved one and donor families like you, we were able to save more lives in 2020 than ever before. Our board of directors and leadership team are committed to the growth of our staff and facilities to meet the needs this increase brings. Such growth spreads the mission of donation further, allowing more families to be supported and more lives to be saved and healed through the gift of life. I am always amazed and humbled to know that in someone's darkest moment, they have the capacity to think of others. Because of the courage and generosity of their donor spirit, your loved one's story continues in others and with us. Their gift has become a beacon of hope to those in need and a guiding light to the CODA teams on the front line. On behalf of our board of directors, leadership team, staff, and many Donate Life partners, we extend our sincere condolences and our deep gratitude to your family. Thank you for joining us. We will begin today's ceremony by raising the Donate Life flag in memory of all donor heroes, followed by a moment of silence to recognize all that they gave. The flag will be raised by some members of the Dakota's Donor Family Coalition. Hello everyone, I'm Gretchen Starnes, the Family Aftercare Manager at CODA. On behalf of our aftercare team, we are so glad that you have joined us today. While supporting our amazing donor families, a common thread we see is that donor families long to know more about the person who received their loved one's gifts. Knowing that a recipient continues to live in honor of their donor is of great importance to donor families. It may not be easy for recipients to write to their donor family, as some carry the weight of knowing what had to occur for them to receive their second chance at life. For others, words may come easily, and the recipient and donor family begin to correspond and perhaps eventually connect. Each circumstance is unique and different. Whether you have been able to hear from a recipient or are longing to connect. I hope our next guest will help fill that longing in your heart. Over the years, I had the privilege of meeting this amazing man. I once saw a photo taken of him at his transplant center, standing in front of a wall that said, live like your donor is watching. This recipient lives his life with conviction, purpose, and gratitude for his donor. His miraculous story will bring tears to your eyes and fill your heart with all the good 
that is in humanity. His story speaks for itself. It is my honor and joy to bring to you the amazing Derek Fitzgerald. The Big Island of Hawaii is like no place else on earth. A mythical landscape born from ancient fire, a contrast of striking natural beauty and rugged, unforgiving grandeur shaped over a millennium. But it is the Hawaiian culture that infuses this island with true magic. A people whose relentless spirit and passion has defined this land for centuries. This spirit, this place, provides the perfect setting for an event as unique as Hawaii itself. This sport is brutal. If you drop your guard, that's when things start to go wrong. It's physical, mental, emotional. You're in for a long, hard day. It's really going to beat you down. A 140.6 mile journey across water and earth, where limits are pushed far beyond their boundaries and perseverance and determination face their ultimate test. It's just a drive and a passion to find out who you are in the end. So unique that you have to experience it to actually know what it's all about. Welcome to the toughest single day in sports. Welcome to the 2015 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. Professional men fight it out for a championship at the front. There is no less exhilaration near the back. The age group athletes bring as much passion and inspiration as the pros do. Sometimes more. Athlete number 1232 is Derek Fitzgerald. You'd never know it to look at him, but he's a cancer survivor and underwent a heart transplant in 2011, which begs the question, how do you get from heart transplant to this? I was 200 pounds, out of shape, overweight, and coming out of my heart transplant, I went down to 128 pounds. I completely atrophied. And so I literally started by crawling out of bed, falling to the floor, and crawling from one side of my bedroom and back. For all intents and purposes, I shouldn't be here. But great things can happen if you forget about the mountain that you have to climb. And you just focus on the very next step because over time, those little steps add up to something pretty amazing. I'm living proof of it. Amazing is the word for you, Derek Fitzgerald. Racing today with someone else's heart in your chest. And then there's athlete number 1232, Derek Fitzgerald, who never dared to think he could be here. One of the things that my doctor told me was, Derek, you've been given a third chance, cancer, heart failure, then a transplant. And a lot of people would see that as a reason to lock themselves in a room and say, this is it. I got to protect this. That's not why I've been given this heart. I've been given this heart to enjoy life and everything there is in it. Someone died to give Derek Fitzgerald life. There's a responsibility that comes with that. The stories come at you in droves. Not all endings are happy. So I just want to confirm that you're ready to end your race. Yeah. Okay. I think if I keep this up, I can make it. It's going to be close, but I'll make it. Just don't stop. It's the belief that never dies. For the rest of my life, I'll know that I did that. And no one can ever take it away. And there's Derek Fitzgerald, cancer and a heart transplant, from crawling out of bed to the elusive finish line. If 
there's anything that I can do to honor my donor, honor the people that didn't make it as far as I have, and to find a way to give back and pay it forward all at the same time. That's what brought me to Iron Man. I was laying in a hospital bed. Cancer and seven years of heart failure had left me exhausted to my bones. I had been read my last rites, and I was ready to go. My family was sitting around me, holding my hands, hoping, praying for some kind of miracle, unable to do anything but watch as the final moments of a seven-year health nightmare ticked closer to an end. A nurse walked into my room and she was crying. She said, Derek, we think we found a, a heart. Do you still want to go through with this? My family cried in relief at the news, but in that moment, I thought about my donor. I thought about you. I thought about your family sitting around your bed, holding your hands, praying for some kind of miracle, crying tears of sorrow as the final moments of another nightmare came to an end. Neither of us were going to survive that day, but it was you and your family who allowed us to go on. It was your selflessness, your generosity, your courage and your compassion that made you and me into we. And for that, I will always be grateful. Your last gift was the stuff of heroes. And I've tried my best to live a life that's worthy even though I know I never will. I've taken good care of your gift, and I've tried to be the best custodian I can possibly be. Now, you guys saw the video of us competing in the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii. And even though I had been in good health for most of my life, up until that time when I was 30 and diagnosed with cancer, I hadn't been active or athletic since college. But now we, have completed six full distance, 140.6 mile triathlons. We've ridden 3,400 miles across the United States, raising money and awareness for cancer and organ donation. We raised millions in an effort to make it easier for the next person going through their own health challenges, but I know it's not enough. We've spoken all over the country, telling everyone we meet about organ donation, about your generosity, but it's still not enough. We've watched the sunrise over Grand Canyon, celebrated with friends as our team won the Super Bowl. We kissed a pretty girl on New Year's Eve at midnight. We found love and we got married. I'm now 10 years out from your gift. January is gonna make it 11. And there is a seven year old, beautiful little girl named Emma, who would have never been born if it wasn't for you. Your legacy has multiplied and nothing I can ever say or do will match your grace. This is the challenge that you have put before me, and it's okay. Because even though I will never do enough to earn it, your gift has given me two powerful things. That's time and hope. And that is why it's my responsibility and my honor to try. I look forward to the day when we'll finally meet each other face to face, and I'll get the chance to thank you for everything you've given to this family. Back in 2012, we competed in our first Transplant Games of America, and it was there that I met my first donor family. They sat down next to me on a picnic bench, they opened up a scrapbook, and they introduced me to their son. They told me how he lived, they told me how he died, and of all the people he had saved. Now, after many years of living in this transplant community, I've met many more donor families and I've looked at many more scrapbooks. At a later transplant game, years later, it was pointed out to me that even though I've written to my donor family and I've thanked them for my life, that they've chosen not to respond so I don't know who they are, which I completely understand. But the point that these donor families were making is that I don't know who my donor family is and that several donor families attending that same event didn't know their recipients. So if these gifts could have come from anyone, then they come from everyone. And so they decided to adopt me as their own. 
And I didn't realize how important that was until it happened. So if you're watching this video and you don't know the people impacted by your gift, then I'm adopting you too. My story of we includes you. So thank you for this life. Thank you for Emma and allowing me to become a dad. Thank you all for attending this donor recognition ceremony. And I'm honored to have had the chance to share a little bit of our story with you. Thank you all for everything. Wasn't Derek's story inspirational? Thank you, Derek. I hope you enjoyed listening to his amazing story. As I mentioned earlier today, each person has a story and every circumstance is unique and different. Your loved one has a story. Your loved one is unique. Your loved one is a hero and your loved one has a legacy. For the next moments, we will experience this year's video tribute. This tribute features our most recent donor heroes from 2019, 2020, and the first half of 2021. Let us reflect on their life and the legacy of hope they leave behind. And may we also honor and remember all donors from years past.
amazing. The tribute was simply amazing. One of our greatest honors, our aftercare team experiences, is learning about your loved ones. Through the stories you share, we feel as though we have somehow been able to know them. Seeing their beautiful faces brings a smile while shedding a tear. Hearing about their lives and walking with your family in your grief is such a special privilege, which we do not take lightly. The late Dr. B.J. Palmer once said, you never know how far reaching something you think, say, or do will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. Your loved one's thoughts and actions have a ripple effect that has no end. I can't think of a more fitting quote during such a dark time in our culture. Their selfless act of kindness impacts our families, our communities, and beyond. And may their light and love guide you forward. We are so glad you joined us today. Our aftercare team is here to support you indefinitely. Whether you would like to learn more about writing to the recipients, discover grief resources available to you and your family, or just to have a listening ear, we are here for you. We can also help connect you with our volunteer program or the Donor Family Coalition. For more information, I would encourage you to visit our website at donatelifeky.org, or you can email our aftercare team directly at donorfamilies at codaoregon.org. Today's ceremony will be available for you on our website, also on our YouTube channel, Donate Life KY. Thank you for joining us and take care.